Welcome back to Everything Money. In this video, you will learn about Cisco. They had bad earnings. We'll show you the financials. We'll do a fundamental analysis using our software, and we will translate these numbers into appropriate stock price you should be paying moving forward. We'll use our stock analyzer tool. If you want to trade Cisco at a quicker pace, we will head over to Mo and he'll show you the charts and trends for trading this on a swing trade, momentum, yada, yada. We'll get to it. But first, why should you watch this video? We have documented Cisco for the last three years. We love this company. We'll show you why. But I bring your questions about a company to two guys who own and operate over $100 million in real estate, multiple businesses and stocks, and we will go over the mindset of investing in a company like this. Paul, let's talk about Cisco, baby. All right, guys, first off, follow us on Instagram, Everything Money Investing, new account. Follow us, our personal accounts as well. You know, our, our, our Everything Money Investing account has been growing quite rapidly. You know, I went live last night. It was very nice. I, I saw that, and you had a lot. Yeah, I was going nice to say, turnout. you should give me the, I actually don't have login for the Everything Money, Neither but I, I ever decided to like lay in bed and uh, go live. You have to earn it, Paul. I have to earn it? Okay. <laughs> so go guys, uh, here's our Everything Money software. We're going to go to the Eight Pillars tool. We're going to find Cisco. Now, Seth, why do we love talking about well, Cisco? Well, I, I, it's funny. I brought up some other companies that we love talking about because in this day and age, folks, you're seeing an influx of young investors, new investors, young and old, and lots of videos hyping up stocks that seem flashy and fun. And Cisco was one of those flashy stocks in 2001. If you oh, Yeah, there you go, Paul. You'll never see this if you open up the normal chart. But look at that puppy way back there. 80 bucks a share. If I told you after, if I told you, if I just said focus on just this... I'd have been the guy saying too expensive, too expensive, too expensive, too expensive, too expensive. And then the morons on YouTube would have said, Paul doesn't understand growth. This is going to the moon. It's a 10 banger, 100 banger. Sick. 20 years later, guys, it still has not reached its previous peak. But what's happened in that 20 year period? Let's go to the income statement. This last year, they did $50 billion in revenue. In 2000, when it was an obvious buy, they did 19 billion in revenue. So from 2000 to now, it went from 19 billion in revenue to 50 billion. Profit was in 2000, 2.67 billion. This last year, it was 10.6. So 2.67 versus 10.6. So if I told you in 2000 that this $80 stock would have revenue, go, go night revenue of 19 billion to 50 billion and 2.6 billion in profit to 10.6, and I said the stock would be down, what would you have said to me? No chance. You would have had me institutionalized. Yep. Yes. You would have told me, I have no idea what I'm talking about. We're on the you said, Paul, you right don't now. understand disruption. Yes. And I would have looked at you and said, you're stupid. Go put your head between a car door and slam it repeatedly because you shouldn't procreate. And guess what would have happened? Because guess what, guys? What matters here is valuation. In the long run, valuation matters. Yes, Paul, but imagine if you would have bought Amazon. Correct. Amazon would have gone from $113 down to six. And in hindsight, you're the person who said, I'd have kept it to six because I understand disruption. No, you don't. You're just delusional. Mm -hmm. So if you're not delusional, stay with, stay us, with us, watch the video even further. So we're going to go look at Cisco, who is also Seth's favorite rapper. Is he considered a rapper? I mean... <laughs> I don't think he's considered a rapper, is he? Remember when that video the, came out? We were in college. I mean, that oh, just it was took the, best. the world by Freshman storm. year of college, it was the best. Storm. We says, I, I think, um, yeah, that was the best. Then I remember watching SNL, like being so excited because he was going to be in SNL. And then the mic went out in the middle of it. He just like so casually flew the mic and then caught another one. And they were like, he goes, my back to the singing. It was awesome. Thong song. I know you love it. All right. So $216 billion market cap. First pillar, five-year PE, we want under 22.5. It is 25, so that's an X. So it's a little expensive based on the five-year PE. Oh, and by the way, it's currently down 9.5%. Why is that? Earnings? Yes, so they had bad earnings. What does that mean? They beat their earnings per share by two cents, but it wasn't, the guidance wasn't good enough they're doing negative guidance. People don't like that, so they're beating the stock. So remember, guys, they beat their earnings per share, and they're down 9.5% right now. How can this work where a company literally beats the earnings, they have bad guidance for a quarter or for a year, and it's going to take off 10% of its market cap? This is what I talk about when I say, make sure you, dis that you separate emotion from reality. Just because they miss guidance, they're still growing. They're still going to grow, but they're not going to grow as fast as everybody wanted to grow. I get it. I do understand that. At the end of the day, that does matter, but it's knocking off 10% off its market value. You're telling me two days ago, the company was worth 11% more, 10% more, but because they 
beat, but not by, and their, but their guidance for the future wasn't as good as they wanted, it's collapsing. Does that make sense to you? Does that even make sense? But that's the way it works. Pillar, what else do they have? Pillar number two is five-year return on invested capital over 9%, Paul. Okay, so the five-year return on invested capital here is 20.2%. That's a check mark. Cha-ching. Now, guys, there is a nice healthy dividend here over double the market, 2.8%. Pays days. out $6.2 billion per year. Now, your Uncle Paul, in his infinite love for his children, mm -hmm. put the free cash flow for the trailing 12 months and the five-year free cash flow above. Look how consistent these numbers are, Seth. $14 billion is the average. Last year, they did 14.8. And they only eat up $6 billion of their dividends into the free cash flow. So they have plenty of money and plenty of free cash flow to pay that nice, healthy dividend. So pillar number three is revenue growth. Let's go see how boring the revenue growth is for this company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, actually, it's very boring. $48 billion to 49.8. It's a check mark, but it ain't pretty. Stagnant. Yeah, it's very... I mean, look at 10 years ago, $46 billion. Yeah. So in 10 years, this company's only gone up 10%. And guess what? Let's go look at their acquisitions quick. Cash flow statement, go to the bottom. $7 billion, $2 billion, $3 billion, three point. So actually, guys, they have a lot of acquisitions here, and they still aren't able to grow their revenue a ton. I would be concerned about that. You don't like to see revenue growth through acquisitions because it's not really like a... I mean, they are growing the revenue, but not organically, you would say? I, I would want to know how much of their revenue is because of these acquisitions. Because mm -hmm. that looks... I, I, when their revenue is flat over a 10-year period, in that 10-year period, they have 10, 13, 16, 18, 25 billion, yeah. call it 26 or 27 billion in acquisitions along the way. Especially looking at their numbers that they're pretty stagnant. If it takes acquisitions That's what I mean. stagnant. That's what I mean. Bad, yeah. Now, does that mean that a dying, that a dying company is not worth the investment? No, of but, course it doesn't mean that. What was that? That's kind of what GE did back in the day. They did anything they could to, to beat earnings and they would acquire whatever they had to do. And then all of a sudden, see where GE is today. So let's keep looking at this because I do want to make comments about this in the future, but we'll look at, we'll use our stock analyzer tool to sit there and assume revenue growth numbers. But either way, pillar number four is net income growth. Net income growth in the last five years, 9.6 to 10.6. Check mark there. Check, 10 years ago, they did 8 billion. So we have some growth, but again, how much of it was driven by acquisitions? Pillar number five, their share is outstanding. Mm -hmm. So guys, five years ago, they did they had 5 billion shares. Now they have 4.22. That's a check mark. So they're buying shares from the market and increasing your percent ownership of the company. This is a good thing, especially for companies that don't have a lot of growth potential. What do you use your cash flow on? Right, and we'll get into that in a few more pillars. But this is an important aspect. This is the silent killer for investing, but this is actually helpful. Ten years ago, they had 5.3 billion shares. Now they have 4.2. They've decreased their shares by 20 percent in the last 10 years. Okay, Paul. Pillar number six involves their debt and their long-term liabilities. Tell me about it. So what we do is we go to the main page, the metrics page, and we pick their five-year free cash flow, 14 billion. We multiply it by five. That is 70 billion dollars. So what we want here is we want to go to the balance sheet and see that their long-term liabilities are under $70 billion. So we scroll up here. Any prediction? What do you think they have? I think it's lower. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a conservative company. I think these... So whenever you have a company that has, has very low growth, but a lot of cash flow, there's only so much you can do with the cash flow. You can pay a dividend. Well, we'll talk about that, but yeah. I think the debt will be lower. So we go to the balance okay. sheet. So $70 billion we software, And it is... $30 billion. Oh, nice. So they can pay it off in a little over two years. So imagine you at home, if you had free cash flow in your personal life, after all your expenses, all your capital expenditures, the money left at the end of the day, and you could pay off all of your debts, all of your long-term debts, your mortgage, your car payment, all of that in two years. Wouldn't that feel pretty good? Yeah, Seth here incredible. can pay it off in 13 minutes, can't you, Seth? I don't... Do don't I you have still a lot owe of me money for something? <laughs> Probably. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Pillar number seven. <laughs> so guys, the free cash flow. I want Seth to explain to us free cash flow. He's becoming our free cash flow expert. <laughs> uh, free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. And if they have a lot of this, they can issue that wonderful dividend that they do. They can buy back shares, which they are. They can make acquisitions, which they are. They can pay down debt and they can reinvest in themselves. But what does that mean again, Paul? Uh, what do you mean? What does it mean? Reinvesting back in yourself? Yeah, what does that mean? It means putting money towards other projects that you want to do internally. Like, let's say, instead of making an acquisition, you sit there and say, hey, we're going to start a new um, Giga factory. Plant. Yes, we're gonna I'll put up a new plant start up. Start or start a new, new research and development. What was that? We're going to start our own EV. Oh, right, or Doge or coin of some sort. Yes, right. well, 
starting your own coin probably takes 14 bucks now. <laughs> so anyhow, you have the, this is the cash flow statement on our exclusive software. Your Uncle Paul adds this line here because I don't want you to exert too much energy doing math. So the free cash flow is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures, 12.9 to 14.76. There's a check mark. Now, one thing I like seeing here, Seth, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, they had $10 billion in free cash flow. Now they have 14.8. That is growth of 40 some percent. That's a lot better than the income growth and the revenue growth they had. Now, understand why their cash flow, free cash flow is increasing. I don't know. But that's part of the due diligence you do when you read the 10K and you do your scuttlebutt and read articles, et cetera. Is it, free? Is it increasing because they've dropped expense? I don't know. But the whole point is I like seeing that growth there. And it's been very consistent. Our final metric, we take the five-year average free cash flow of $14 billion, multiply by 20. That's $280 billion. We want their market cap as a starting point to look at to be under $280 billion. What's the actual retail value of um, Cisco's Cisco. two hundred and sixteen billion is the market cap versus two hundred and sixteen. So that's a check mark there. Oh, wow. So what this means, folks, is we've taken their free cash and projected that if we were going to buy the company as a whole, we'd love to pay right around two hundred and eighty for it. But the actual retail price is two hundred and sixteen. Currently undervalued, Paul. Well, that's the question. So we go to our eight pillars tab here, where it does all this math for you. So if you're really lazy like I am. You just want to go to the eight pillars tab and it'll just tell you everything you need to know here instead of doing all that math. Now, the one thing that's interesting is their PE versus their free cash flow. Very different. And we saw that in their, their net income because PE is based on earnings, free cash flow multiples based on free cash flow. There are differences in there based on IRS rules and things like that. So what our next goal is, is we want to sit there and use a stock analyzer tool. And this has been such a popular part of our website. We're going to use that to make assumptions because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. We don't know the future. All we can do is make assumptions. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger always say they do not buy a business unless they can reasonably estimate what they're going to make in the next five or 10 years. So that's our goal here. What can this company do in the next five or 10 years? Our goal is to be conservative. And then hopefully Cisco is selling for less than that conservative number. So the, great, the great news is you can have this software. We'll let you know right after we do this. This is the stock analyzer tool. Let's transfer this market cap and this price into what we should be paying for Cisco. So Cisco, if you had 100 Cisco's out there in 10 years, I imagine only two or three will probably be gone. So I like to do a 10-year analysis. And like usual, we do our three assumptions. So with acquisitions, look at this revenue growth over the last 10 years. With acquisitions. Oh, boy. Yeah. So is it fair to say that they're probably their organic business is probably declining? Yes. So this is only guys, this is something I don't like. Because companies, especially a company like Cisco, I'm looking at going, okay, they don't get growth in their in their business organically. They're making acquisitions. Those acquisitions are expensive. They spent 25 billion, 28, 26, 27 billion in the last 10 years on acquisitions using with free cash flow of call it. $120 billion of free cash flow. So they've used up 20% of their free cash flow to make acquisitions that have caused their revenue to, 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 to flatline. Paul Cisco has acquired more than 30 startups over the last four years and a total of 230 over the lifetime of a company. So startups don't concern me as much. It's going to be very cheap. I'm more worried about what do they spend 7 billion and 10 billion and 3 billion on in, in those last 10 years, right? Because when a company is stalling on its revenue growth, they're probably going to overpay a little bit just to, get, just to get that revenue growth. And that's what concerns me about capital allocation. Does that mean avoid Cisco? No. But let's sit here and let's be conservative. Let's say they do negative 4%, negative 2%, and let's say they keep a high side of the revenue the same. Again, this sounds conservative, but if it wasn't for the acquisitions of $26, $27 billion in the last 10 years, would they have any revenue growth? I have a hard time believing that. I think the non-conservative route is yeah. to go negative two, negative one, zero. Like, I think, I, I don't even think that that's that conservative. All They've right. proven that they can't allocate capital correctly. Plus well, they haven't proven that. Well, they just, based on their numbers, it's not really growing. And the business is not, the business, it seems like it's not growing either. So something's wrong here. Yeah, there are some unfortunate things happening. Mm -hmm. Correct. So profit margin. They have, 17, they have 18, 17 and a half, and 21. Mo, what would you want me to put in for profit margin? Um, 15, 16, 17. Okay. Free cash flow margin is 29, 28, and 26. Just stay around there. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I'm going to go 24, 20, 25, 26. 25, 26. And the reason being is 
you know, maybe they can get some revenue growth by decreasing their margin a little bit, mm-hmm. right? So I, I think we um, we were doing some research on them yesterday, and their gross margin. This is what I don't like. Their gross margin did fall from sixty five point eight percent to sixty four point five percent. Contraction of the gross margin. That's going to lead to the bottom line. Gross margin is for every dollar extra they sell. How much of that goes to the bottom line? They've already covered their overhead already. So if they sell an extra dollar today, it's not going to go towards overhead because they've already covered that overhead, right? So that's something to... Um, guidance for Q2. I will say this though. You know what? I will. Let's take this back a little bit. Their guidance for second quarter is 45 to 6.5% revenue growth. Hmm. Doesn't really change my opinion. Okay, let's be conservative here because, and go from there. Because I, if they do that, good. Can they do it again? Can they, that's the that's question. The so you want to look at multi-year outlook. Yes. I don't know. But the good news is they do have low single digits, low mid-single digits on their guidance, which, by the way, the market didn't like because the market wanted 7.4%. Okay, PE. Okay. Give me a PE, Mosef. Um, 10, 12, 14. That's the same thing. I agree. Okay. Yeah, and no. the reason being, guys, even though it's super low, this is a dying, the revenue is going lower. So you have to get your return from the free cash flow, the buying back of shares, the paying out of dividends. And, and so you want to pay a lower multiple on those PEs. This is going to be ugly, guys. 12.5%, 12.5%, 12.5% desired annual return. We hit the analyze button. The stock is currently at $51. Oof. Guys, it's just all number. It's all math. Now, the revenue growth hurts it. Well, $15 to 23 bucks. Now, do I really believe that's the number? I do not. I don't. I mean, well, maybe it is. It's just numbers. It's funny, Paul. This is a seven pillar stock. Just the PE is a little smidge high. Yeah. So let's go. Let's go sit here. Why don't for revenue growth we put in one, three, five? Let's so say let's that they that. consistently do that number that they said. It's still low. Yeah. Look at that. Guys, it's still an overpriced business. You're still in the somewhere in the 30 range. And you might sit there and say, that's crazy. Guys, it's a dying business. It's a business where the revenue is dropping organically. You have to factor that in there. Now, if all of a sudden, now guess what? We haven't looked at any earnings calls. We haven't talked to anybody in the company. If they have a path and they're starting to see this four and a half to six and a half percent growth year over year for the quarter, and that's a consistent thing they can get, Mm -hmm. that's still, now maybe you change your PE to 12, 14, 16, analyze, it's still expensive. Mm-hmm. So we've changed everything here from our first assumption and say, okay, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's give them a higher PE because they're back to growing. Let's give them a higher revenue growth number. It's still expensive. It's just math. Even on the high end of our, our, our numbers, we're still in the mid to high 30s. So this might sound crazy. I know the comments below are going to be like, you don't get it. I, I don't get math. Two plus two equals four in my book right? It's just the present value of all future cash flows is what I'm going to make on my investment. That's it. And over long periods of time, as you saw with Cisco at $80 in 2000 and at $50 today, over long periods of time, overvaluation will get corrected in some fashion. So I like when we do these exercises because we just increased everything here. What does it take then? Let's take a 15, 17, 19 multiple. Are we there yet? We're not even there yet. We're still not at the point where it's a buy. Even 33 to 50 on the high end. Yeah. We're still not there yet. So I've altered every assumption I made along the way. So that's the way I look at all this software, how it helps me get to the number I need to be at. If you want this software behind Paul, he will tell you how we can get it right now. So guys, we created the software because our users kept asking for us to do analysis on companies. They want to do their own analysis instead of waiting for us. So we created the software. You get everything you see here, everything you saw in the video, everything that's coming soon. And you also get it all on your mobile phone through Android and um, what's the other company? Apple. Apple through iOS. So you get all that. You get exclusive daily content, two or three videos per day that we send to you guys. That's exclusive just to our Everything Money subscribers. You get access to Seth Mo and I. You get 30 years of financial data. But most importantly, one of the biggest things we got is most people felt like they were alone. Like, you know, we have a very, very different view of the world. And if you do too, you probably don't have many friends around you, you can talk to you about it. This is over 6,000 people currently in our chat from all over the world where you can discuss all of your financial ideas, your investment ideas, even crypto. The people are in there talking about crypto. You get all of this for only 90 cents per day. If you can increase your returns 
or decrease your losses by one or 2% a year. This would lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in extra gains in your lifetime for only 90 cents per day. Less than a cup of coffee. It's a no brainer, guys. 90 cents a day and your price is locked in. Two ways to sign up, Everything Money or Patreon. The benefit of everythingmoney.com directly is we are not big enough to charge sales tax yet, so you'll save on the sales tax for quite a while. 90 cents a day, go sign up. And if you're looking to trade Cisco at a quicker pace, you can join Mo in the bid and ask, and he will show you the charts. Wow, Mo, look at that. Look at that upswing. What's going on over there? The gap's going to fill, baby? <clears throat> yeah, so this this is going to change. This is this morning, we have this big drop in price. Now, if the, we're holding a level here of $50.10. $50 if it drops below $50.10, then you can look to short this thing. It's at fifty-one eighty-one already. It's already recovering. And look at this. I'm going to just show you this moving average. So I said on the morning show this morning, as soon Cisco is going to open down here, of course, we saw. Then I said, this 200-day moving average is going to pull the stock price back up. And we're already seeing that it's already recovered half of its losses from the morning. So that's just what these moving averages do. This is why I tell you guys, you have to pay attention to the moving averages. They are very strong. Remember, there's quant funds that are playing with this. So as soon as something drops below a moving average, it pulls it back up or pushes it down. So be aware of this. This gap will likely fill. What I, what I would tell you to do, just watch it on a swing trading chart. As soon as this moves into the sweet spot, start running it up. You're going to run it to the 100-day moving average. It's going to be. This is going to turn out to probably be a good trade for you from a swing trading perspective, and that's where I would put it on my watch list. Now, from a day trading perspective, look at this, Seth. It's just no movement on a normal day. No movement, no movement. This was earnings. This is a boring stock to trade. This is a stock that I would tell you not to put on a day trading chart just because you need a little bit of that volatility to move around to make any type of gain. With this, you're going to sit there for a very long time to try to make a few cents and put in a lot of work for it. So go find a different stock for a day trading chart. But if you want to learn how to swing trade this with me, come and join me in the Bid and Ask Nation. You'll get access to my Trading 101 series, which gives you all of the rules that you need to be successful. The Employed Trader series, which is a series of six stocks that I go through every single day with you. My... Uh, week, monthly seminars on Saturdays, Saturday mornings. Ask all the questions you need to ask me. And more importantly, the Discord community of 900 people that are all traders. And we all talk about this and we all make money together. That is our take on Cisco. We will keep you updated as we progress. Watch more of our videos. If this is the first video you've ever seen us, we welcome you in. There's a lot of language you need to learn, so just keep going. This will take some time, but we welcome you into our, our community. There's so. 1,100 videos now. Crazy. Yeah. Fondle a thumbs up on the way out like you tickle Paul's little white belly. And uh, we'll see you next video. Thanks.